Hey there guys, welcome to today's live stream. Um, so, um, as far as anything to announce, excuse me, as far as anything to announce for today, um, I do want to continue to mention that on Tuesdays, it's every week at this moment in time, I'm going to be doing more exercise based live streams. So, it's going to be totally opposite from what I do here on Facebook. I'm focusing on doing more, starting out with easy exercises, more beginner-based exercises that you can try out. Yesterday, I did a live stream yesterday. It was around 9.30 yesterday morning. Um, and you can go back and watch it. It's on my Instagram. Uh, if you want the link to that, just let me know. But yesterday morning, I did a live stream over uh, lower body foam rolling uh, sort of stretches that you can try out. Uh, those are basically focused on warm up and cool down based um, as a part as a part of a workout routine and it's the warm up and cool down phase top exercises um, but you can definitely go back and look at those I'm going to continue to do more videos like that stuff that you can easily do that's easily accessible if you don't go to the gym um, such as more body weight stuff maybe some dumbbell stuff I might throw in in, in there that you can try um, stuff that doesn't require a lot of equipment uh, that's what I plan on doing on Instagram, is to do more exercise, talking about form, talking about technique, things of that nature. So you can watch that live stream. It is on my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram username is Brandon SP Fit. Um, but if you want the link, you can just let me know and I can send you that specific link to get, go to my profile to watch it. But I'm going to start doing that. Every Tuesday, Tuesday mornings is what I'm looking to do with those live streams. So watch those. I'm going to try to put out as much great information that you can take with you, especially for beginners, um, because I really want to cater to beginners and people who are maybe who have gotten into fitness before, but are trying to get back into it or people who are new to fitness. So that's sort of what I'm trying to cater my content to. So definitely check those out. Um, I'm going to continue to post those on Instagram, and then I'll keep, of course, what I'm doing here on Facebook. Um, but that's pretty much all I wanted to mention before I got started today. So today I'm going to have a lot of stuff, not really thrown at you, but a lot of different things that I'm going to sort of discuss, because this is going to be packed with so much value. Um, so what I'm talking about today, of course, is supplementation. And I'm not just talking about vitamins and minerals. I'm going a little bit beyond that in this live stream. Or I'm going to be talking a little bit about performance supplements. A little bit about different types of supplements. I may have mentioned a few of these in the past, but I'm going to sort of expand a little bit in this type of live stream. And sort of go into deeper detail. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a wide variety of different supplements today. So discussing supplements. So the first things that I'm going to sort of discuss getting started is basically performance supplements, which these are the three main things that I'm going to sort of talk about, and that's protein, creatine, and stimulants. So protein is com composed of amino acids, and there are 20 relevant amino acids in protein as it relates to human nutrition. Creatine, research has shown creatine can help with muscle gain and strength as well as fatigue resistance. Stimulants. Caffeine is one of the most common stimulants or supplements, excuse me, found in tea, coffee, and other different forms such as pre-workout. Um, so that's pretty much sort of discussing. These are a few sort of supplements that I'm discussing, but again, I'm going to go into greater detail as I progress through this stream and sort of explain to you guys a little bit more about what these some of the benefits of these particular supplements and what I'm going to start out with first is because a lot of my clients mostly are more focused on muscle gain however I'm going to go beyond sort of muscle gain today but what I want to talk about first is ergogenic aids or performance based supplements they're both the same thing it's just a different term and what exactly they are and the ergogenic aids are pretty much protein, creatine, stimulants, anything that is more focused, BCAAs, anything that's focused on sort of building muscle, focusing on building your performance, things of that nature. So to define that ergogenic aid, 
So this is where we just summarize things. It's basically a dietary supplement that may enhance performance or body composition, and it may also be referred to as a performance supplement. So the first sort of performance supplement or ergogenic aid that I'm going to talk about is protein. Protein is one of the most common that you've likely heard of. So basically, protein is composed primarily of amino acids, which I just discussed previously, and these can be categorized as non-essential and essential amino acids, as well as BCAAs, which are known as branched-chain amino acids that are under the umbrella of those essential amino acids. So your essential amino acids is basically amino acids that are obtained through the diet, and there are non-essential amino acids as it relates to uh, talking about, you know, sort of building muscle. So non-essential amino acids are amino acids that can be synthesized by the body under normal substances and can be attained in a diet. So basically these are sort of two different sort of things, whereas essential is something that needs to be attained, obtained, excuse me, through a diet, and then non-essential is just basically amino acids that are synthesized by the body under normal substances. So, basically going from there, so what I want to discuss before we get onto that is I mentioned BCAAs here. And BCAAs are actually, they can be found in protein. However, there is a supplement separate that you can take called BCAA, which is basically the three essential amino acids and these help with sort of with building skeletal muscle tissue and it's found actually in the body so it's found in that skeletal muscle too but this helps and aid with muscle building so branch chain amino acids are the three essential amino acids like i just discussed and that's leucosine isoleucosine and valine so they are abundant in skeletal muscle tissue and named for their branch-like structure so that's why they're called branch chain amino acids so they're somewhat, somewhat linked together. So when we, before we move on to creatine, which I'm going to be talking about next, when we're talking about protein, basically when it comes to protein, protein is more focused on muscle recovery. It's not really something that you take before a workout. It's a little bit different. So protein sort of helps with the process of muscle protein synthesis, which is basically where new muscle basically new muscle proteins are built and formed and the muscle grows and repairs itself at the molecular level so that's basically what the protein is doing it is sort of helping to repair that's why you're supposed to drink protein or take protein supplements after sort of a workout because it's helping the body recover from the muscle damage that has happened during your workout and when i talk about muscle damage that's not a bad thing Muscle damage happens every time that you exercise. It's a part of the process, especially when building muscle. And protein is helping to sort of, one, I don't know want to say speed it up, but it's helping to, you know, rapid, more of a rapid pace that um, sort of process. So that's basically what protein is. Again, it's the supplement that you're going to take likely after your workout. Creatine. So creatine is another one that, and when I'm talking about these performance supplements, of course, these are all focused primarily on that muscle building aspect. If that's your particular goal, then these are some things to keep in mind as I'm discussing, you know, these performance-based supplements. So many individuals, of course, wanting to build muscle have likely heard of this uh, supplement, and creatine has shown substantial evidence-based research that it adds muscle mass strength as well as being able to be resistance to fatigue so one of the most common types of creatine supplements is known as creatine monohydrate which is probably likely the supplement that you take if you are going to take creatine so is the most effective form of creatine available as a dietary supplement i actually take creatine myself I should have brought my, some of my supplements here with me so you could get an idea. Um, but basically, creatine can be found in different forms. There's powder forms. It's, it's somewhat similar to protein, except 
it is more a lot of creatine you can buy uh it to be without a flavor so you can sort of mix it into water and it's going to be unflavored so that's something it's a little bit different in protein whereas protein has sort of a you've got this vanilla and chocolate whereas creatine is almost it's not like pre-workout but it's similar where it's it's more of a pre-workout powder and sometimes you can get it unflavored sometimes you can get like a fruit punch flavor or something to that effect i usually drink it after my workouts now it's been said that you can you can drink it both in the morning and afternoon uh to sort of help with that muscle growth this again is in a way similar to protein where it's helping to add muscle mass however creatine has different aspects to it where it's helping to build fatigue resistance as well so that's something to keep in mind is that when you're taking it it's going to help it's helping your body sort of prepare for you know your future workouts i guess you would say so stimulants stimulants is another thing i'm going to discuss and this is going to be basically the last thing as far as it relates to performance based supplements and stimulants you've heard of is actually the other the main term it's known as is caffeine but it's the same it's just another name for it so caffeine products is pretty much any products like coffee tea energy drinks uh, pre-workout supplements and something to keep in mind that you get from caffeine and stimulants is the hormone it's known as adrenaline which you've likely heard of it's a hormone that comes from caffeine also known as epinephrine, epinephrine <laughs> that excites bodily processes increasing alertness and cell metabolism so the main focus with caffeine of course is to increase wake wakefulness attention and focus and what it actually does as it chemically blocks receptors that create the sense of feeling tired so that's sort of where that comes into play and that's where adrenaline release comes in which increases the metabolic rate and subsequently leads to more energy which is the other term for energy is actually ATP which is adenosine triphosphate this is just a basically an energy form or an energy uh, sort of molecule in the body that helps to do basic bodily functions so the general lin release is also responsible for improving pain tolerance and mobilizing body fat stores so there can be some positives when it comes to caffeine because it is helping to sort of give you that give you more energy uh, a lot of pre-workouts have caffeine in them pre-workouts are a great supplement i actually take those as well i mean i take i take all of these that i've mentioned i take pretty much on a daily basis and pre-workout is something especially something great to take if you are really tired and you maybe you work out in the morning and you're really tired when you get to the gym taking pre-workout will instantly sort of get you in the mood to work out um so that's what that sort of that caffeine that adrenaline is helping to get you started and it's going to help you to get the motivation going especially when you do pre-workout supplements um that's something to keep in mind sometimes pre-workout supplements can also have creatine in them i actually sometimes i look at some supplements that have both but i actually started sort of separating my supplements where even though because you can kind of you can take them all interchangeably like all together so basically what i do is i drink pre-workout before i of course before i go to my workout and then after i'll come home i'll mix my protein powder and then after i drink all my protein i usually go to creatine to sort of finish off all the supplements i need to take for that day so that's pretty much how i do it pre-workout i take in the morning before i go to the workout after i get done with the gym i come home and then i mix my protein and then after that i'll do i'll drink creatine pretty much the rest of the well not the rest of the day but after that post workout uh, that's what i'll drink so the next thing we're going to discuss is this is not talking about um performance supplements anymore we're going into health supplements which these health supplements is completely different it's separate 
even though it's it's somewhat under the same umbrella, of course, because it is a supplement. But health supplements are more focused on sort of improving a component of your overall health and well-being. So health supplements can include vitamins, mineral-based, um, anything of that nature. You likely probably already take health supplements. Um, if you don't, it's something that, especially if if you have certain sort of metabolism issues or if you're not getting enough of a certain vitamin, there's a great option to sort of keep in mind. Um, so let's go ahead and move into more about sort of health supplements. So basically, when we're talking about health supplements, the first thing you likely will think of is vitamins. So vitamins can be classified into two different groups, and these are known as fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. It's something you may not know. But there are different categories of these. So fat-soluble vitamins include vitamins A, E, D, and K. And these mean that they use fat for digestion and, and absorption. So that's what a fat-soluble vitamin is. Uh, vitamin D, you know, like milk, anything like that. Those types of, are, types of vitamins are fat-soluble. Water-soluble can include vitamins that are vitamin C, vitamin B complex vitamins, anything of that sort are known as those types of vitamins. So when we're talking about sort of the water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins, so I just sort of discussed that with fat-soluble, that means that it uses fat for digestion and absorption. So what exactly is water soluble? So water soluble vitamins basically they dissolve more easily and can be readily absorbed by the body, but they are not stored and must be consumed more regularly to maintain consistent levels. So vitamins A, E, D, and K can sort of stay in your body a little bit longer. Whereas water soluble vitamins, you need to consistently take them to sort of keep that sort of keep consistent levels in your body. So the water-soluble vitamins mostly present in dietary supplements are in their bioactive form. So compared to fat-soluble vitamins, water-soluble vitamins are more transient, which means that they are less likely to produce a vitamin toxicity, which I may discuss here, here in the next couple of slides. And basically what that means, I'm going to just go ahead and discuss it now, but basically what that means is vitamin toxicity means pretty much having negative effects of taking too much of a vitamin. So it means that water-soluble vitamins don't have that high toxicity level. And vitamins in general, and when I'm talking about vitamin toxicity, it's not very common that you would get any kind of negative effects from vitamins. You would have to really overtake too, many, too much of a specific vitamin to sort of see those negative effects. But what that means is that Water-soluble vitamins have that really low risk of having higher toxicity than, say, maybe a fat-soluble vitamin. And some other sort of vitamins, all of what water-soluble soluble vitamins, they include, of course, your vitamin C, but it also includes basically all the B vitamins. So you got vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9, and B12. So those are all included with the water-soluble vitamins. So the next thing we're going to discuss is minerals. And these are a little bit separate from vitamins. So, But they do have a lot of different health benefits, much like vitamins. So basically what minerals are are compounds that can be found in both animal and plant foods. Excuse me. Minerals can be grouped into two separate categories and they are known as major minerals and trace minerals. So major minerals are minerals that are found in the body at large amounts while trace minerals are present in the body at smaller amounts. Much well different from the same different but kind of in the same vein as vitamins but again specific Vitamins, of course, like I just talked about with fat soluble and water soluble vitamins, certain vitamins stay in your body longer, certain vitamins stay in your body less. Now, when we're talking about major and trace, major and trace minerals, major minerals 
are more minerals that are found in the body in large amounts. And then you've got the trace minerals are present in the body in smaller amounts. So that's somewhat similar to the fat soluble and the water soluble vitamins is that certain types of minerals are in the body at larger amounts and then some are in smaller amounts. So basically when we're talking about sort of major minerals and the minerals that are found more often and some of these are known as macro minerals and these can include calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, chloride, and sulfur. These are all sort of the macro minerals. So these, despite being needed in large quantities, most are not typically used as supplements. So unless included as a small percentage of a multivitamin or in the case of a sodium and chloride as salt. So calcium which is likely one that you know, is best known for its role in bone health. Calcium has that benefit of bone health. Like most mineral supplements, calcium mineral supplements come in many forms. Calcium carbonate, citrate, phosphate are all suitable for increasing calcium levels. So there's different, different types of sort of calcium supplements you can take, much like any other sort of mineral that I mentioned. So... One thing to keep in mind too is that calcium actually plays a key role in muscle contraction in your body. It has a lot of different benefits when it relates to not only bone health but you know your muscles. And I won't go into too big of a deep detail on each of these, but you can do a lot of research and a lot of minerals have a lot of very good very good like large amounts of benefits that you may not know. And again, when you're taking certain minerals, you sort of have to keep in mind of what are you lacking in, like what is sort of a vitamin, or going back to vitamins as well, what is sort of a vitamin and mineral that you're sort of lacking in, and what do you need to take, say like, you know, if you're somebody who maybe is, you know, has issues with your bones, maybe, you know, taking more of a calcium, you know, supplement would be a good idea. Um, I do want to mention, of course, I'm not trying to recommend anything because, you know, I'm only a personal trainer. But if you do have questions about any of that sort of thing and you're wanting to take that, it's, of course, recommended that you talk to a doctor. You know, what's the recommended supplement? Or basically what I'm just giving is information to you to sort of keep in mind. I'm not really recommending a certain thing, but it's something to keep in mind that certain vitamins and minerals have different effects and different sort of benefits so that's something to keep in mind um so moving on from that we go to the guidelines for supplementation so we sort of discussed a little bit about performance supplements we discussed vitamins and minerals and now i'm going to sort of discuss a little bit about the guidelines for supplementations so supplementation supplements often of course have the benefits of improving health and performance but they can also have potential to do harm which is going into sort of what i discussed earlier about toxicity so supplements are not meant to specifically be used to supplement foods which when we look at protein supplements they're simply to aid in protein intake rather than replacing food completely that's something to keep in mind you still need food <laughs> you can't just take a supplement um, so all the the purpose of a supplement is is if you're lacking in a specific vitamin or if you're lacking in protein or if you're lacking in any sort of mineral or anything of that sort that's what that supplement is doing is helping you to have more of an intake of that particular deficiency to say it in simple terms so don't just rely on you know supplements replacing food supplements are used in basically together with food so tolerable upper limit is a term that is known to basically refers to the greatest quantity of a vitamin in a mineral that can be consumed without creating any adverse effects and you're going to see these when you look at a supplement facts label if you go to the store and you're looking at vitamins or different types of, of supplements so supplement facts can give you an idea of the tolerable upper level, upper limit, excuse me, as well as recommended daily values or DV. So 
So sum that up a little bit more. Tolerable upper limit. That's just telling you how much of a specific quantity of a vitamin you can take without it creating any negative effects by taking it. Uh, supplement facts, of course, they're going to mention that tolerable upper limit, but they're also going to mention the recommended daily value that you, you should take daily. So here's an example sort of, of a dietary supplement label. They're very simple, they're, excuse me, they're very similar to nutrition facts and that they show you serving size, uh, servings per container, even show you calories, um, and different other things that they include are sort of the suggested use of that supplement. Maybe if they have amino acids, it would explain what they have in it, how many milligrams of that amino acid. Um, if they are sort of mixed in a, like it's mentioned, I mean, with this particular item, a proprietary protein blend, um, it's going to show ingredients as well, like you would in Nutrition Facts label. And again, you see the percent daily value. So that's just showing you what percentage of that particular um, sort of basically like calories or total fats, total carbohydrates, the percentage of daily value that you're getting from taking this single, this serving, which is 25 grams of that one scoop, that's how much daily value you're getting from that particular serving. And of course, that sort of, it's got an asterisk there, which is basically, you're, you're going to see this on a lot of labels where it says percent daily values are based on a 2000 calorie diet. So it's basically that off that specific type of diet. Um, so that's going to be something to keep in mind if your diet is, di diet is different that you're focusing on. Sort of keep that in mind with the daily value that it's got mentioned there. So they're very similar when it comes to nutrition facts, but they're going to sort of it, they're going to be a little bit more condensed, and they're not going to show as much as nutrition facts. Um, they're likely just going to show particular vitamins, sort of what daily value you're getting from that particular vitamin. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you're looking at supplement facts. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I know I kind of threw quite a bit out there, um, but I wanted to sort of go into a little bit deeper detail, and I wanted to share with you guys some more information that you may not know. Um, going into detail about, you know, ergogenic aids, those performance supplements, um, going into detail about health supplements, vitamins, minerals, and sort of what you can expect to see if you're looking at a supplement facts label when you go to the store. And again, each of these different vitamins, minerals, or supplements have a particular sort of target or a specific goal in mind. So, like with me, my particular goal is to gain more muscle. So, of course, I'm going to be taking creatine. I'm going to be taking protein. Pre-workout maybe something if I need something to help me, sort of to give me that boost in the morning to get going which is a stimulant and it's part of the same sort of umbrella with the performance supplements if i'm lacking in a particular vitamin uh, like with calcium or that would be a mineral i should say if i'm lacking in that particular mineral then i would need to take a supplement to help with that but i still need to eat food regardless because a supplement is just a supplement what you're not getting in your diet that's the point of it is it's to supplement what you're not receiving if it's a vitamin or if it's a mineral if you're not getting enough that's what that's doing is to supplement that so i know that's a lot to share with you guys but i hope you found it helpful and i hope that you got some value from this um if you would please share this if you found this helpful and uh leave any comments or feedbacks that you have uh sort of in the comments or you can send me a message uh, with my phone number, which is 931-434-6880. I usually have my stuff up here, but I forgot to put it in this time. Um, or my email, it's brandonparton95 at gmail.com. So that's all I have for you guys today. I will have a good, another good live stream next week where I'm, I'm going to be talking about muscle muscular hypertrophy. Uh, going into a little bit in more detail about that, about sort of talking about muscle damage, stress of the muscles, and how that helps with gaining muscle. Um, so definitely look forward to sharing more with you guys. Uh, again, I hope you found this valuable. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. But otherwise, I will see you guys in the next live stream. So thank you.